Guys, I've been saying this over and over again, and I'm going to keep saying it because it's such a big deal. One of the craziest things about blockchain is that you can create applications that handle millions of dollars in transactions without anybody's permission. And today I'm going to tell you about an app that launched just this week, and in under 24 hours, it had over $500 million locked into it. And that's just how crazy this space is, okay? So today I'm going to walk you through the app and give you my thoughts on this as a blockchain developer. So before we get into that, you know, if you're new around here, hey, I'm Gregory, and on this channel, I turn you into a blockchain master. So if that's something that sounds good to you, then smash the like button down below and subscribe to this channel. And don't forget, the DeFi master class is today. So if you want to capitalize on this massive trend while it's still early, you know, steal my passive income app and learn these hot skills, then uh, sign up with the link down below today. All right. And last but not least, you know, this is not financial advice. I'm not telling you to use these applications. I'm just giving you my perspective as a developer. So with that being said, let's get started. So what is this app? Well, it's Yam Finance, right? Now it's a pretty silly name, but that's just sort of the state of things in the more like fringe uh, areas of DeFi. And this app literally came out of nowhere. Like they just put out a blog post and some tweets and within 24 hours, it had $500 million locked into it. And I saw this coming and I actually, you know, farmed a little bit of Yam just for fun myself as soon as it launched. And I was actually telling everybody about it inside my uh, membership, you know, Blockchain Mastery University, which you can get access to if you join the DeFi Masterclass today. And so I watched the whole thing play out, okay? And within 48 hours, it basically completely tanked, all right? So the good news is like the people who deposited money into the app itself didn't like lose their money. They could actually withdraw their funds. And there's even word on the street that you know there might even be a Yam version 2.0 coming out soon. So this may not be the last we hear of old Yam Finance. So let me talk about like why this app is so hot. You know, it's got a really silly name. How on earth did they convince people to put all this money into it? Well, Yam's not the only one. Okay, we actually saw three different projects like this launch this week. We had Yam. You know, we had Based Money and also Curve. Okay, so all these projects are about liquidity mining or you know yield farming. Okay, so this is a brand new token token distribution method where you basically get free tokens for using the app. Okay. So all these apps have this thing called liquidity pools where you just like deposit your money into them. Uh, and they can use that to like, you know, loan the money out, you know, do a lot of the things with it. And then you get tokens, uh, as interest for doing that. You know, that's your reward and that's how they're able to distribute this brand new currency. And quick pause, because this DeFi trend is so hot right now, I'm actually going to release a brand new tutorial next week that's going to show you how to build your own DeFi app where other people can stake their tokens and then you can reward them for doing that by issuing them a brand new token with liquidity mining. So make sure you subscribe to the channel to see that when it comes out. And so all these projects, you know, use liquidity mining. And now I really want to focus on Yam and talk about like why it was so hot and why it just blew up overnight. So first of all, you know, it plays off of these other hot DeFi projects like Compound, Wi-Fi, and Ampleforth. So it already took elements of these really successful projects that already blew up and mashed them together to create something brand new. So in some respects, it's a lot like uh, Wi-Fi, you know, the Wireign Finance Project, because it was a token that started with zero. Basically, uh, you know, all the tokens were locked into the app and then people could only earn the tokens by depositing money into it. All right. So you're not buying tokens in this case. You're just lending the app money essentially and it's rewarding you with tokens. So that's what happened with the Wi-Fi project. You know, it went 100x in the matter of, uh, I think, like seven days. And so Yam did a very similar thing. And also it is a stable coin, a lot like Ampleforth. OK, so this is another pretty hot project where basically it's designed to be pegged to the US dollar or be you know close to the US dollar. And it actually uh, has something called rebasing, which means if the price goes above US dollar, it actually just prints more tokens. Uh, everyone's balance increases in order to smooth out that price. And if it goes below, then everyone's balance decreases, okay? So when you're trying to evaluate uh, like the price of these projects or how valuable they actually are, it's more important to look at market cap than it is the actual price of the token itself because it's supposed to function like a stable coin and it works differently than other cryptocurrencies who are designed to just like go up you know, forever in price. And you might say, like, why would I want to hold a token where my balance increases and decreases? Well, everyone is subject to the same thing. So, like, if you own own 1% of YAM or 1% of Ampleforth in this case, um, then as the price goes up, you still continue to earn 1% of Ampleforth. And so if the market cap goes to, uh, you know, you say you own 1% and the market cap's currently... $200 million. If it goes up to, you know, $2 billion, then you still own 1% of that. And so these were very familiar um, characteristics, some of these hot products that blew up and Yam 
integrate a lot of these into their own projects. So it's a stable coin like Ampleforth, it had token distribution like Wi-Fi, and it also made a really smart move where like you had to own DeFi tokens to actually participate. Okay. So instead of like depositing stable coins in the app, you had to own other hot projects like Synthetics, Aave, you know, Chainlink. And these are tokens that other DeFi holders, you know, DeFi users had sitting around and they're you know, way more likely to put these things into the application uh, rather than try to cash out for a stable coin because they can put their mid to long term holds to good use. Okay, so it's it's pretty smart. You know, I had personally joined the Ave pool and also the uh, Synthetics pool. Okay. And thankfully, I was able to withdraw my tokens. And again, this is not financial advice. I'm not telling you to use this app. I was just willing to do this for fun. And, you know, I was willing to lose pretty much everything that I put in here. So with that being said, you know, let me offer my thoughts on this as a blockchain developer. Okay. So there were definitely lots of risks associated with Yam. I guess it's a high risk project. It came out of nowhere. Um, it didn't get audited. And that's ultimately what caused it to fail. Okay. Um, basically what happened was these guys just shipped this project without paying somebody to independently verify the code and how it would work. And uh, they ran into a bug that allowed, that affected the rebase mechanism. The thing that, you know, made the price go back to $1. Okay. And uh, they wanted to vote to change this thing. And then there was a bug that messed up the voting. Okay. So that's my best understanding of it. Maybe a little more complicated than that, but that's the gist. Now, thankfully, you know, people who put money into the app were able to still withdraw their money. So they didn't lose if they just stuck with the actual protocol itself. And so it could have been a lot worse than it actually was. Okay. So the moral of the story there is it's just not worth it to put a big project like out like this um, where hackers could steal money without getting an audit, okay? Because that, that's a pretty big honeypot of half a billion dollars where somebody might want to come in and try to steal the funds. Um, and then also, you know, if a bug like this happens, it could lock those funds up forever, potentially. So that's my biggest criticism. But on the other side, this is incredibly inspiring, which goes back to what I was saying at the beginning of the video, which is one of the craziest things about blockchain is that you don't need anybody's permission to create an app that handles, you know, millions of dollars in volume. Okay. I do recommend getting an audit if you're going to put an app out there that handles that kind of volume. But we're getting to ways where the community can actually fund those kinds of things. I've actually been following uh, Kevin from Gitcoin, where he talks about, you know, potentially doing uh, community funding. I mean, Yam was built in pretty much 10 days by a couple of young guys. Okay. And it launched with, you know, a blog post and a few tweets. And within 24 hours, it had over $500 million locked into it. I mean, that's just crazy. And even if you have to get an audit to like get something to that level, like the amount of friction to doing that is still so small. I mean, that's how crazy this blockchain space is. I mean, what other space out there are there just like users chomping at the bit to use your app, to put money inside of it? And so if you can create the app that satisfies that demand, like the barrier of entry is not that high compared to a lot of other places. There's no red tape. You don't have to get approved to do this. And we're starting to see that like literally if you build it, they will come. All right, so that's all I've got. And don't forget the DeFi masterclass is today. So if you wanna learn how to capitalize on this hot DeFi trend, you know, learn these skills, steal my passive income app, then sign up with the link down below. And as always, you know, smash the like button, subscribe to the channel. And until next time, thanks for watching Daffy Diversity.